flex. Where did we start? As it, it's funny because look, me, you, and Darren Bent were outside, and we were like, "This is an awful result." And then you started reeling off other four ones and four nils have happened <laughs> in like in just the last couple so, of so, seasons. So you like it's not that so surprising. Like, well, maybe yeah. it's not that deep, <laughs> you know, because we think it is the worst. Lost thing our ever. last seven away games in a row. I can't remember. I can't Can remember. I, ask you, I want to ask you something. This is quite a serious question, actually, yeah. because I, I I always struggle to know how to frame it. Yeah. Because United fans come at me; they literally want to take my head off every time I talk about the ownership and still money being spent on top players. Right now, I understand that they're taking money out of the club, and in 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 theory, they're using the money they're taking out of the club to then buy players, so they're not using their own money. But when I I still think of the amount of money that's been spent on signings. Like when I still think of Maguire and Di Maria that's come in and obviously Sancho, Bruno, Wambasaka, all these, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 million. Is it right for me to say, but you still have been given the players that you wanted and the players have to take responsibility for this? Because Gary Neville, every time he talks, seems to blame the owners. And I'm like, well, one second, look at the players that are on the pitch though. Like Rashford on the pitch, top player, top player when he's on his, Jaden Sancho, Bruno, there was a season and a half ago, we were making a comparison between Bruno and Kevin De Bruyne. So, yes, I get the ownership issue. And I think that's one we'll discuss. Surely the players have to take responsibility for these performances as well now. One million percent. You, we can live in a world where both statements are right. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That not one gets a pass because of the other. Yeah. Um, when I done my match analysis at the Brentford Community Stadium, I stood by the side of the pitch in disbelief. But maybe because I was there um, and you kind of park the ownership for, for just for one second to mm. dissect the 90 minutes. Teams don't run 13.8k kilometers more than you because of owners. Fact. They run 13.8k kilometers more than you because you didn't care. Mm. As, a, as a professional. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like the, as a most, football the player. Most basic thing, isn't it? As it's a just, football player. If your opposite number gets the better of you, then that's a problem. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's, mi that's, that's mine thing. and yours battle. Yeah. Now, you could argue that how am I still here if I'm an inferior player and stuff like that? Why haven't I been moved on? And mm. that's when you start getting into the planning of the football club and lack of the lack of City vision. Contracts being given out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Eric Bailly is still there. Phil Jones is still there. Um, Jesse Lingard only just ran his contract down to a free Paul Pogba mm. we bring back for 90 million and quid. And that there and is an ownership player development that's that that's where problem. it's failing yeah but you should you can't give a pass to these players and the problem is is that pe the conversation moves on because what happens is is you get fed up so what happens is is okay well those leopards are not going to change their spots mm. i need to stop expecting that from player x from player mm. y from player z they've reached the ceiling shouldn't even be here actually why are they still here oh yeah owners so it they, they, they both, both things are, are correct and both coexist and both are interlinked as to mm. why Manchester United's failings are there. But the reason why it ends up at the, at the door of the owners more so than anything else. Yes, week in, week out, that game to game in the moment is the players, but mm. the categorical failings of the football club year on year on year and the steady decline, because mm. it's, it's, it's declined at a rapid rate. Yeah. You know, from 2013, coming up to a decade when we last won the Premier League, mm. uh, downwards has been a steady decline. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's because, okay, dividends and stuff aside of making transfer funds available, if you want to have that argument as the outside looking in, it's easier for Manchester United fans to understand that deeper. But say you're looking at surface level mm. as a fan from outside of the club and you go, oh, they always get money. But... If you're the head of the ship and the people that you employ continually do things incorrectly, but you're happy to keep them in place because you're lined, your pocket, you're fine, you know, then that's on you. Uh, you know what? I'm so happy you said from the outside looking in, because again, like I, yeah. you know, I only know about United on a surface level. I've got friends like you that kind of, you know, let me dive in a little bit, yeah. but it's only surface level sometimes. I will go back to the start of sort of last summer. And again, this is why I, try, I need to understand. You wanted several players. Sancho, you got. Varane, you got. Ronaldo was a dream, you got. Mm. So I'm looking at that as a Liverpool fan thinking, my God. They should arrive now. They've, yeah, they've arrived. They've got, all, they've got all what they wanted. They've got one of the best. We did before talents. we win the league after one game the against Rolls Leeds. Royce, yeah. yeah. Rolls-Royce defender, comparable at the time to Van Dijk. And then you've got the world's best player ever. 
still in his prime, that still can do some stuff. And I look at that and think, is that an ownership problem or is that the players just not wanting to turn? I don't get it. Because yeah. I'm looking at the, from an ownership standpoint, I'm thinking, again, if it's not their money, that's the discussion. But I'm thinking, as a fan, you've dreamt about those three and you've got those three. They've given you those three. And it still failed. And it still failed. Yeah. That, that ain't, is that ownership or is that management? Oh, that's, that that's managed because at the time you had Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and at the time you were saying, well, we still needed a defensive midfielder going into that. Yeah. I remember going yeah. into that season and I said, you know what? Sancho, Varane and Ronaldo, I don't want to hear about you ain't got a defensive midfielder. You, you, if you're a good manager, you, you, we, 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 we win a trophy this year Something or we, we, you know, we, we kick on here. Mm. You don't get that type of quality and get free pass. And I said, Oli had to show it to us. And ultimately, Oli wasn't a good enough manager. There were early signs, even though we finished second that year, mm. there's been a lot of signs that he was not going to be good enough in the long run. Mm. A lot of um, asterisks, you know, mm. we had the best away uh, record for ages. No fans. No fans. Like, do you know what I mean? So there's there's little, you know, you won the league when there was no fans. There's little asterisks over that, you know? It happens. We're talking about United. Oh, sorry. I was just, no, I was talking about asterisks. <laughs> Um, but no, back back to the back to United. Look, at the end of the day, I think the problem is is that there's the problem is is that there are so many problems, and that depending on which conversation is being had at that moment, is which one is right because they can all be right. If you want to have a conversation solely about owners, mm. you're going to be right yeah. a certain bit. If you want to have a conversation solely about this squad and how the leopards don't change their spots and mentality, and as a professional, just not doing enough. You're going to be right. If you want to talk about recruitment, you're going to be right. There's, there's so many different layers to this. Let, let's talk about recruitment. Um, w when I was a teenager or in my 20s or even in my 30s, United wanted your best player. He takes your best player. Yeah. I say he because I always feel like United is like a behemoth who just steals things. Like he wanted, he wanted your best player. Like 10 years ago, Harry Kane's playing for United. Yeah, easy. It's, it's, it's just a fact. Jack easy. Grealish is at United. Easy. Like, it's a fact. Yeah. Why can't you recruit these players anymore? But like you're still offering big money. Yeah. We know that, right? You still, you still are United. You still are the biggest club in world football. Yeah. Why can't you attract the players anymore? Like this Frankie de Jong one is going on. And Frankie de Jong under Ferguson, literally he's there the next day or he's not there at all. Like you, do you want to come or not? Yeah. No, bye. We move on. We get another superstar. Now, I mean, look at Sandra Martinez, Ericsson on a free. Yeah. I mean, this ain't United. Oh. To answer your questions, because we're not very good at it. <laughs> if it, because it's not a good step for your career right now. No, it's true. You still got Varane. You yeah, still that's Ronaldo. that's fine. Look, Sancho. it can it can, look. You, that's what I mean. That's because of look. No matter how poor we are, yes, it's still Manchester United, and you can pay big wages, get a big contract. If you're a, if you're a player, you it depends how you feel about your career in that moment. Mm. Yeah, you know, Sancho could have said, you know what. Um, I'm not going to go. I know Manchester United have been chasing me. I've seen what's happened. It's probably not the place for me to go. Mm. But he decided it was. Mm. That's fine. Big contract. Thinks he can be part of the revolution and changing it around. The problem that you've got is that Manchester United is not an attractive prospect. As, as not, as, it's not as an attractive prospect as it was because yeah. of how poor we are. The simple thing. If you, we had Jude Bellingham and showed him around Carrington. He came to Carrington and he said, and he went, oh, this is nice. Look at all the history. Wicked. Oh, lovely. I'm going Dortmund. That's for my career. Yeah. Erling even, Haaland even got his United, debut. More money. Erling Haaland got his debut off Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at Mulder. Mm. Norwegian compatriots. Yeah. Oli even used to say in press conferences, speak to the lad, saw him at Norway. Yeah. And good to go. So well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Good friends with his family and stuff like that. Really close connection. So you got a direct line and there was like, oh, could we try and maybe get in Ireland? Uh, Dortmund. Dortmund, thanks, mate. Like, because... So you're not even losing out to the, the other big boys. Of course not. You're just losing yeah. out to other clubs. Because, because the, the reality is, is that those teams right now, you're going to get more out of your career being at Dortmund for two years than you will at Manchester, evidently, than Manchester United. Let's quickly talk about Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, mm. Everyone says he sulked when he went off. I'd say that he's not happy. He's he's that kind of player. He's got a moan. He's I'd, always done that. I'd be like that. He's done that since he was. He's 18. always done it. Always done exactly the always same done thing. That. Uh, United have now. It looks like, uh, according to sources, have said it's okay for him to go now. I guess if the right offer comes in. What's your thoughts on the whole? I'm Ronaldo? fuming on the whole thing. I covered this this morning on United. And the reason why I'm fuming is because, again, it's back to the lack of a sustainable plan. Mm. So I was told. At the beginning of the window, when all the Ronaldo rumors started happening, categorically told that he's not for sale. He's part of Eric's plans. And that's not even like, you know, super, super 
great information that was out there. You know, we asked Eric Ten Hag when we was on tour, a lot of journalists asked him about Ronaldo. Basically, stop asking me. He's on leave. I'm expecting him back. That was the line from the football club. Mm. Even though Ronaldo was turning up to training with his agent, George Mendes, trying to get a move. Fine. I, well, I know you want to move. But as soon as... And I wanted Ronaldo to stay right at the beginning of the window before the rumours came out. Mm. When Ten Hag, before Ten Hag got here, I was like, he needs Ronaldo. He needs De Gea. Yeah. The rest, cool. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he needs those two. It's the yeah. only two constants we've That's got. That's crazy. And yeah. now they're, they're That's two of the least constants we've got. That's crazy. I was thinking, it's yeah. crazy. They're the two it's least you can rely on. mistakes now. One that wants to go. You know? Yeah. But it's funny. Football changes. It does. But as soon as he said he wants to leave, I said, right, we'd fine. Ronaldo, great servant, X, Y, Z. It's a new era at the football club. If you want out, we've got to find a way to get him out as quickly as possible before this happens. And why I'm annoyed, it's the conversation's moved away from tactically in the next stages of the team and the evolution to Manchester United have been clear for the whole summer that he's not going anywhere and they want him to stay. Mm. But then you get people like Simon Stone, um, really, really credible journalist, you know, works for another big publication, putting out a scathing report today that basically said that senior sources told another big publication um, that they're happy for him to go. They can't believe how how bad the dressing room is as soon as he got back from as soon as they got back from tour. It was lovely in Thailand and Australia. As soon as they got back to England. Do, do you want him to go now? Yes, because it's a mess. Yes, because yes, because it's a mess. And yes, because as soon as he said he wanted to go, I believe that was the best thing for all parties. Having a Ronaldo who does not want to be there is not good for him. It's not good for the last stages of his career. And it's definitely not good for a team that a new manager is trying to rebuild. However, Manchester United then give you another problem as they always give us fans. Who on earth are we going to get instead? Jamie Vardy. <laughs> 